This is Take Your Health to Heart with Kansas' favorite on-air cardiologist, Dr. Jody Galicia and guests. The doctors are in. Now, here's Dr. Galicia. Good morning and welcome to our broadcast of Take Your Health to Heart. I'm Dr. Galicia and Brett, we have a special guest today. I like it. Mark White, president of Nexelon Technology. And Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm pleased to be here. Well, you guys have a great product, and I, I want you to tell us about it and what it does and how people can be helped with this non-invasive, non-pharmacologic way of treating a whole lot of disorders. So where do, okay. where do we begin, Mark? Tell us. Well, yeah. So, so, okay. So the FDA, because it is an FDA-cleared medical technology, calls, the, calls this device a cranial stimulator. Um, so more specifically, what we're doing is we are stimulating the brain. And, and by stimulating the brain, we are enhancing the brain's ability. So some would say to heal itself, some would say to regulate itself, others would say to balance itself. It sort of depends on the audience that you have. But at the end of the day, we have a non-invasive technique where we are introducing a frequency signal into the brain, very similar to the brain's natural innate electrical signaling process. And the idea here is rather than introducing medication with any type of a side effect profile or any type of, a, of an efficacy issue, we're able to actually non-invasively stimulate the brain. And 70, 75% of the time, we can reduce, if not eliminate, all symptoms associated with anxiety, depression, and insomnia, and several other co-occurring conditions. Um, as you mentioned, there is a long list of issues that originate in the brain. Mm. Boy, no question about it, Mark. Now, you know, right at this moment, we have a plethora of drugs to treat almost anything. You know, depression, weight gain, some for memory loss, uh, PTSD. I mean, you know, it goes on and on. And those drugs all have side effects. You know, there are no surgical procedures that we can say, yeah, that's going to help people like this. People with depression sometimes wind up getting electric shock treatments. That's no fun. Uh, these are all areas where you guys may have a product that plays a role. So let's talk about that a little bit. Okay, so, so if you understand the brain, so I'm going to simplify it, Doc, for your audience. Um, so, so we have an electrical system in our brain and we have a chemical system in our brain. And those two systems interact with one another. And when they're balanced, then you experience life on life's terms. You, you sleep, you eat, you manage stress, you manage good moods, um, down moods, etc., and you have what would be a normal, healthy lifestyle. When either one of those two systems is out of balance, you're going to have a symptom. So depending on how extreme the imbalance is, is it in one system or, or both systems? And so when we talk about chemical systems, again, for the listeners, we're talking about neurotransmitters, people... Uh, many of you uh, have heard the word dopamine, serotonin, and on the electrical side is, is what we call EEG. And, and what we've done at Nexel is we spent about 15 years in a research capacity beginning with animals and then working into human research. And we have actually developed and created what we call a waveform. And it is a waveform that is as closely aligned to the brain's ability to communicate with itself as possible. And, and so, again, we've simplified for your audience, but, but what we're doing is we're studying frequencies. There is an electrical component, but it's not electricity that your body detects. So our technology is undetectable to the human body. Wow. It, it's a 40-minute treatment. It's safe and cleared by the FDA, and usually the client sits in a lazy boy recliner type of chair and sleeps during the treatment. And the effectiveness of the treatment is directly tied to that waveform, which if you study frequencies and low voltage electricity and you spend enough time in a laboratory, eventually you build a waveform. And that's the secret, if you will, to excellent technology and what's driving so much interest in our technology, both uh, around the United States it's and now on a global level. Wow. Yeah, and I think one thing very, very important here is that people can take this treatment, it's 40 minutes, 
You know, I've seen it in action, and they do not suffer any consequences. They're not getting shocked. Uh, they're not feeling this in any way. They walk away usually feeling better, and that's a good thing, although it's not a short-acting uh, type of result. It, it lasts over a period of time. But, uh, you know, I think always it's kind of a mystery when you talk about the brain and you talk about electricity. You know, it's like, oh, wow, you know, how does all that work? And I think that you guys have spent so much time on it, and now you've got FDA clearance. What sort of, what do you think is the mainstay treatment here? You know, what kind of illness would you say, this is really something that we like best of all? <laughs> okay, that's a great question. So um, let me tell you what the FDA will allow us to say from mm -hmm. a marketing standpoint, which is what we've been cleared for treatment for, and then I can sort of give you a summary of my thoughts of where we really see the future. Great. So currently, Nexalin is cleared by the FDA for the treatment of anxiety, depression, and insomnia. Everyone is probably aware that depression has many forms. It's major depressive disorder, treatment-resistant depression. Uh, you can have uh, postpartum depression, seasonal depression, so all of the depression indications. For anxiety, that could be mild anxiety, panic attacks, inability to manage stress. And then, of course, b both of those conditions are going to contribute to sleep disruption. Now, what, what's really going on here, though, is Nexlin doesn't have this very specific waveform that only treats depression or only treats anxiety. A at the end of the day, what we're doing is normalizing or restoring health to the brain. I mentioned it earlier. We're, we're specifically balancing and normalizing areas of the brain that are associated with symptoms related to anxiety, depression, and insomnia. And then, of course, we can start talking about PTSD. That's a co-occurring condition. We can talk about trauma conditions. We can talk about addiction issues related to food, opiates, uh, stimulants, methamphetamines obsessive compulsive disorders, because at the end of the day, what all of those conditions have in common is the brain. Right. So we're back to where we started. Yeah, let's talk about the side effects too, Mark. And that's one thing I'm reading about right now. You know, there basically there's medications out there and the side effects is longer than uh, a list of what, how that medication is actually going to help me. Um, is there any side effects at all with this treatment that, uh, that you guys are behind uh, at all that, that you have seen over your years of studying it? So there's really only one side effect that comes up in these conversations, and it's a, it's a short three- to five-minute side effect post-treatment. And it's usually tied to a patient that has had a long history of medication uh, failures. And so, therefore, the doctors have, provide, uh, have prescribed uh, several different types of medication. And over a long period of time, there's a toxic element. And Nexalin actually begins to support the brain's ability, again, to normalize, which has a detox effect. Wow. And so there can be a short headache for three to five minutes, but it's a mild headache. Other than that, no, there are no adverse side effects. There have never been any issues reported to the FDA or filed in any regulatory capacity on a safety issue or a side effect issue that required any type of medical intervention. And I think that at the end of the day, this is what makes the technology so attractive to the patient population as well as to the physicians that are treating these patients is the lack of side effects and the fact that the Nexlin technology actually works. And if a person is taking care of their health and wellness, this is a treatment that can actually work for years, if not the remaining part of your lifetime. Well, yeah, I think one should talk for a moment about depression. You know, that's one area where you guys are definitely cleared by the FDA. I think all these other things are important. I think you guys are going to get there, you know, that there's going to be help for people with some of these disorders. But with depression, we find that something like 18 to 20 percent of the entire population has what you might call semi-depression or mood lowness. They're just not feeling quite good. You know, that's a scary thing. That's a big, big number. And then in single digits or so, you might find that there are people who are severely depressed, dysfunctional, or, you know, have times when they cry or, 
you know, really don't sometimes become suicidal. I mean, these are all things that we see, and it seems like a growing number. What do you guys see in your universe as that population being? Are those numbers about right, or are there more out there that are suffering? So interesting. <laughs> uh, thank you for asking the question. because um, So I'm now traveling all over this country talking to some of the leading academics and researchers because we're very engaged in validating the technology scientifically beyond what we've already done. But my point is, I think the numbers actually are getting up closer to 30% of the population suffer from some form of a depressive disorder. I'm spending quite a bit of time in China right now. Um, as everyone's aware, there's, you know, in China you've got 1.4 billion uh, citizens. And in that population, they are estimating 30 31% suffer from some sort of a depressive disorder. So I think the number that you mentioned is probably a bit conservative. And, and, of course, what is, in addition to the large number of, of patients in that depressed population, is then, of course, there's only about 15 to 20 percent that actually respond favorably to the medication. So for the group of uh, listeners that are out there that are li uh, currently listening, what we're trying to say is, is that our treatment will have 75 to 80 percent of all patients suffering from these mood disorders. And, and you, there will not be any discomfort or any side effects. And, and you won't find yourself dealing with side effects instead of dealing with depression. And that's what I think a lot of your listeners made uh, that have had these types of medications. They struggle with the benefit side effect profile. So I feel less depressed, but I'm very lethargic and I've gained weight, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah, you know, one of the things that we've seen, Mark, just across the board is weight gain. You know, people will say, gosh, I took this stuff and now I'm 20 pounds heavier. And not only that, each year they tend to gain weight. So that's one thing that I really, really hate about the medications, especially for depression. You know, that their side effects are not good. And a lot of these people are lethargic and they may not be as sharp as they were before. They're just kind of a little bit blah. But the weight gain affects the people we see with cardiology. You know, the cardiovascular problems are greater in people who become heavier. And, you know, I've seen people gain 40 pounds in three years on right. antidepressant drugs. Right. right. And you know what? If you stop the drug, they're depressed. They're somewhat depressed while they're taking the drug. And so the side effect profile versus the benefit profile, in my opinion, with all of these drugs is really suspect. And now I, I will grant you there are people who will go out and shoot themselves if they don't take the medicine. Right. But here's one other thing, Mark, that I see about antidepressive medicines, and that is that doctors will start patients on these drugs when they're critically, there's something happened. You know, they, somebody died in the family or some other negative influence on their life or they're just they come to the doctor because they're just tired of feeling down. But once they get started on the drugs, nobody tries to get them off. Right. You know, it's like, well, you know, every, you, we've seen you three months ago, and hey, you're doing okay. Uh, you know, here's another pill. And so that is difficult. Plus the fact that when the drugs are withdrawn, people then often become very, very, very anxious, depressed, and suicidal. You know, you say, okay, we're going to just stop giving you this drug. Wow. I mean, that is a big moment in time. They have to be withdrawn from the drug slowly, and there are consequences of that. So how do you see that in the future? Are any of these drugs better than others? Or in, you all are basically in head-on competition with these pharmacologic products. What do you think the ratio is in terms of success uh, okay. of your products, of, of Nexalon, say, versus those drugs. So I can tell you that it's interesting that you bring up the, the, the word competition because Nexlin is really trying to position ourselves as an alternative um, for the patient that's not responding to medication, or number two, the patient that has the side effects like weight gain, or number three, the patient that goes to the doctor and they started gaining a little weight, but they're not as depressed. Well, but they have a, another side effect and and again, you get a second medication. And what happens over three to four years, you find yourself on three to four medications. This is where Nexlin's trying to come in and, and sort of 
align themselves with the pharmaceutical industry because what we're trying to do here is to help the population to be healthier without the dependency on these medications. Yeah. Mark, let's take a quick break. I want you to finish your thought when we come back here, of course, on Take Your Health to Heart with Dr. Galicia. So hang on. Good point you're making here with. Thanks again to everybody listening on to our affiliates this morning. As we mentioned, of course, KKOW in Pittsburgh, KWBW in Hutch, and of course, right here in Wichita, Take Your Health to Heart on 1330 KNSS, Wichita's number one talk. We'll be right back. Dr. Galicia and guests will be right back on Take Your Health to Heart.